Uh, Max Scherzer traded to the Texas Rangers. As we're recording this, we still leave open the possibility that Justin Verlander could get dealt. Starling Marte could get dealt. The Mets can still deal off a lot of pieces right now. The big one we're going to focus on is just Scherzer himself going to Texas. I bet he didn't expect this when he signed that contract just literally less than two years ago. No, I don't think any of us saw it happening. But then uh, I don't know if you saw this after the game on Friday, Max Scherzer had a uh, press conference uh, at his locker in which people were asking him questions. And he was basically like, yeah, if the organization's even going to think about selling, I want to get the hell out of here. And then they traded David Robertson. And then a day later, they traded him out of New York and he's going to spend what might be the final two years of his career playing for the Texas Rangers. And I will get into the details of the trade in a second, but it's just so interesting. The it's such a unique trade and it had to be a unique trade because of where the Mets stand right now, because of where the Texas Rangers stand. Uh, Both teams didn't expect to be in the positions that they are. And both of these teams are basically the same. Like Texas is basically at this point is like, what if we do what the New York Mets are doing, but better and more efficient. And the New York Mets are like, ah, shit. Well, I guess we got to sell now so that we can buy again in the off season and try this whole shit again uh, next season. So this is such a unique situation. And it makes sense that Texas was the team who went in on Max Scherzer because Texas and uh, Texas and New York are thinking very similarly in how they build their championship level rosters when the Mets first drew up this contract first sign him you know it's not just uh what we were expecting but you know what the Mets were expecting certainly going into this year obviously you, you had you signed Verlander you last year's AL Cy Young award winner uh you have Scherzer on the roster you get rid of DeGrom's mess and you know it's funny too you know you talked about this a little bit but it's funny too that here the Rangers are they signed DeGrom and then he immediately gets hurt because that's what DeGrom does anymore. Then they have to make this trade for Max Scherzer to replace essentially DeGrom. So <laughs> wow. funny. It's yeah. so funny. That's so incredible that the the Texas Rangers, the Texas Rangers spent. So the last time the Rangers made the playoffs was 2016. And so you could argue that from 2016 until now, six years is like what you could call a re- rebuild now they did a couple different strategies during the rebuild they tried to trade for lance lynn they tried to trade for mike minor they tried to put together a pitching staff around joey gallo didn't work out the way they hoped it would and then they tore it down sucked for a couple of years and then they've kind of been through six years uh in the six years in the rebuilding desert of major league baseball And at the end of the rebuild, they got a couple good pieces, missed on a couple draft picks, signed a couple good players as international prospects. Uh, And then about two years ago, they just decided, fuck it, we're just going to spend a billion dollars and buy our way back into the big money baseball game. They're spending, if I remember correctly, they're spending $487 million on their middle infield by signing Corey Seager and Marcus Semien. They uh, dropped hundred million dollars on Nathan Avaldi. We mentioned they dropped a five-year contract on 34-year-old Jacob DeGrom when no team was going to offer him a fourth year. They offered him a goddamn fifth year and added $60 million above what the New York Mets were willing to offer. So, and by the way, they also have Bruce Bochy as their manager, the manager that every team in baseball wanted to hire. So, you know, they are, they have to be paying an ungodly amount of money to Bruce Bochy at this point. If they're dropping a half a billion dollars on their middle infield, they're signing two starting pitchers to $100 million contracts. Bruce Bochy, his contract details aren't public, but Bruce Bochy's got to be getting paid to be the manager of the Texas Rangers. And they just dropped a billion dollars on the team. And by the way, some of those players hit. Adolis Garcia was an international signing for them. He, or actually he was traded from the Cardinals to them as a minor leaguer. He's been a two-time all-star. Josh Jung is a former top 10 pick. He's going to win rookie of the year in the American League. So like they, uh, Dane Dunning is probably a better starting pitcher than Max Scherzer this season. Kind of crazy to say because it's Max Scherzer, but Dane Dunning might be a better starter than Max Scherzer this year. So Texas has some young pieces. They dropped a billion dollars on their team to buy into the big money baseball game. And now they're going to buy into the Max Scherzer game as they're, what I would assume is their number two starter in the playoffs. I mean, like you said, 
if you look at the Rangers ERAs this year among starters, I think Scherzer would be fourth in the rotation right now because Evaldi was obviously a starter in the all-star game this year. Uh, Dane Dunning has like a three, five ERA. John Gray has like a three, seven ERA or something like that. So I assume Scherzer's their number two pitcher in the playoff rotation just because of name recognition and him being a big game pitcher and all that stuff. And maybe it's his season turns around playing for Texas as compared to just toiling around with the Mets, but they dropped the bag on a number two starter who was supposed to be Jacob deGrom. But then when Jacob deGrom got hurt, they just said, fuck it. We'll go trade for Max Scherzer. (laughs) And that's going to be our number two starter now. (laughs) So ultimately for the Rangers, they're in this, hotly contested AL West race uh, with the Astros. They beat the Astros to the punch here and picking up a starter to add to their bolster, their rotation. How do you think that that shakes out the rest of the year? Do you think that this gives the Rangers the edge to stave off the Astros or do you think they're still coming? My hope is that they play in the NLDS. That's my hope is, uh, you know, he, might be a little difficult for them to play. Sorry, in. ALDS. Sorry. They, I hope they play in the ALDS because Right now, it's looking like Texas is going to be maybe the one seed in the American League, maybe two or three. Houston is going to end up being the five or the four, maybe the six. And if, by the way, you, you kind of want the six seed in the American League because it gets it means you get to play whoever the crappy AL Central team who makes it out of the wild card round is. So I'm hoping that Texas and Houston play a five game series in the playoffs because. Those teams are so evenly matched right now. Both have like four batters in their four batters in their lineup who are all stars. Both have two top end starting pitchers. Houston might add a third. Texas just added a third. Houston just traded for Kendall Graveman from the Chicago White Sox. It's going to be so interesting if those two teams match up because Houston and Texas are super evenly matched right now. And uh, I would love to watch that playoff series because we know baseball's random, right? Random shit happens all the time in baseball. So when you have two teams that are so equal in talent to each other, anything could happen. So true World Series contender, you think? Yes, because there is no true World Series contender in the American League. The American League has four really good teams this year. It's Houston, it's Texas, it's Baltimore, and it's Tampa Bay. Sorry, Toronto. I know you're kind of like hanging around a little bit, but those are the four really good teams in the American League this year. And any of those four teams, I think, have an equal chance of making the World Series in the American League. So every move like a Max Scherzer trade or every move like Houston trading for Kendall Graveman, or I guess you could say Baltimore trading for Shintaro Fujinami from the A's because that's the only trade they've made so far. But like every little move like that makes a bigger difference because there really are only four teams teams in the American League who realistically can win a championship and none of the four have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Okay, so let's talk about the Mets side of things. So they get the brother of Ronald Acuña Jr. We don't know if he's going to end up being of the same caliber of player as Ronald Acuña. If the Mets are able to get that kind of production, certainly we'll consider them the winners of the trade. As of now, it's just a prospect for an aging veteran. Just off that basis alone, where do you think the Mets and Rangers stand? So the Mets aspect of this is super, super interesting because we know the Mets are kind of the exception, right? Steve Cohen's willing to just drop money all over the place in the sport and that no one else. He has his own level of luxury tax threshold in baseball because he's just willing to drop money all over the place. It's not just that they got Luis Angel Acuna from the Texas Rangers. It's that the Mets are going to be paying thirty five million of Scherzer's remaining 58 million on the contract. They're paying 60% of the contract for him to go pitch for the Texas Rangers. So if you want to follow the winding path here, the Mets paid basically eight figures. I mean, they would have had to eat some of the contract no matter what, because it's just a bad deal. Scherzer's pitching like a number four or number three starter this season. And no one's paying that amount of money for a number four, number three starter. But They basically dropped 10 figures for a top prospect. And I don't even hate the move from the Mets because money doesn't matter. From what I understand, Luis Angel Acuna is like a legitimate top, top MLB prospect. He's going to be number one in the Mets system. He's already in AAA, I believe. So he's like right on the precipice of getting to the majors. He's a shortstop, but they have Lindor. So he might move to third base or he might move to center field. But essentially, they're making the bet on we're going to pay like 
30 million dollars extra to potentially land our center fielder of the future who we only have to pay three million dollars in the first three years of his career and honestly that's a great move if you're the New York Mets. If you can flip that crappy Scherzer contract into the center fielder of the future and only have to pay $30 million to make the transfer happen, that's actually a really good job by the New York Mets because it's not like the Tampa Bay Rays where their entire payroll is $70 million. Dropping $30 million to move Scherzer's contract for a center fielder of the future who's going to be cheap actually is a really, really good trade by the New York Mets. It's a weird deal because it was this one-for-one swap. It was Scherzer for Luis Angel Acuna. That was the only players that were traded in the deal. And somehow I think the Mets might end up getting a better deal out of it because basically never in baseball is any team trading the best prospect in their farm system for a number three starter. Like that trade just never, ever happens in baseball. So I think the Mets might actually in exchange for dropping $30 million of the Scherzer contract, the Mets might actually be the winners of this trade. Obviously the Mets were going nowhere this season. They're probably not going anywhere next season because hell Scherzer Verlander, they're just going to be a year older. That's where it comes into just trying to maximize the value where you can get it. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out. You know, it, it's kind of like an angel situation. Once they got in those Mets uniforms, they just got zapped of their powers. So <laughs> it, it was just time for them to make the right move here and move on because it wasn't going to work out for either side. Who knows? Max Scherzer, if he goes on to be awesome for the Rangers the next three months, then maybe we look at this trade a little different. But like you said, if, uh, Luis Acuna ends up being amazing, you know, and really takes over either the Santaville shortstop, whatever spots on their team. Then maybe 10 years hindsight, we look and say the Mets won this trade. It's hard to say right now yeah. because we're just, you know, projecting prognosticating, but it's all going to come down to the box score. Um, yep. But and what the Mets are betting on is we can trade because they already traded Eduardo Escobar. They traded David Robertson to the Marlins. They've traded Scherzer. They're probably going to trade Verlander by the time you've heard this video. They're going to trade Mark Canna. They're going to trade Tommy Fan. They might trade Starling Marte. By trading all these short-term pieces, they will then have the flexibility to do it all again this offseason. We're going to trade all these prospects and sign all these players so we can go for it again next year. That's the game plan for the Mets. By selling now, we can then try the exact same bullshit all over again next year. All right, guys. Well, let us know what you think of this trade. You know, one for one top prospect for Max Scherzer, aging veteran. Like to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on all our social medias from Juju and Kyle. Stay safe, happy, and healthy. We will see you next time.